Hey guys, this is Matt and I'm back with another Shooter on Rails tutorial where today I'm going to do a quick video over object pooling. So let's take a look. Some of the objects that we're object pooling are our projectiles, which you make every time you shoot, so you want that to be as efficient as possible. And then we're also object pooling those uh, explosion prepads that you see whenever an enemy gets destroyed. So I'll just finish spawning all of these objects and we'll take a look at how our object pool works. So taking a look at the scene, uh, first let's take a look at the pyroclastic puffs since they're the simplest objects. And we only made four of them. Out of all those enemies that we killed, we only made four. I went ahead and turned on the renders so that we could see them. Uh, we only made four uh, pyroclastic puffs. Five. There's the fifth one. So that's pretty good. And looking at our projectiles, our player hero is shooting these speed missiles and it looks like we made about, I don't know, ten, ten or so of those and they have a short range so they don't stay alive very long if they get shot into the distance. And then we have these uh, regular missiles which move a bit slower and they're shot by enemies and they have a very high time to live, a self-destruct range of 600, where the speed missiles have a self-destruct range of half that, 300. So just by having the stay alive time, we get uh, a lot less uh, objects created. And also notice the placement of the objects. Uh, they're all being placed at a Y distance of negative 99, and that's just the arbitrary distance that I chose so that they would be underneath the map. As you can see over there, they travel a little bit farther than what the map is. But looking at the speed missiles, move up, yeah, they're directly under the map. All right, so let's take a look at the code. So we're first going to take a look at those uh, pyroclastic puffs since they're the simpler example out of the two. We're creating them inside of the enemy health script uh, right here where we do get explosion. And this is done on the death method call. And that is called whenever the enemy health reaches zero. Right there. All right, so going back to the death method where we're calling get explosion via our prefab accessor which basically operates as our uh, executor. It manages all of our resources and objects and what we're going to give it is the current position of the object calling it so we know where to spawn our explosion and then we're going to give it this uh, variance which is just gives it a random displacement from the origin. So going into get explosion. The first thing we're going to do is calculate a position variance and that is simply done by picking a random number between the explosion variance that was given in the signature between the negative value and the positive value of it for all XYZ. And then we have this object called an explosion pool. And let's take a quick look at that. All it is is a list of explosions. So it's as simple as that. No real magic going on there. And if our explosion pool has an object in it, then then we're going to simply pull the first object out of it at the zero index and then remove it from the list. And if there weren't any more objects in this list, then explosion is going to be null because we initialize it here. So if explosions is null, that means we didn't get one out of our list. So we're going to go ahead and call instantiate, which is the expensive method that we were trying to avoid, but we have no choice in this instance. So we give it the normal parameters that are needed and it's going to give us back the explosion object, which is just a script on the explosion prefab. And, and I covered that in the previous video. So now all we need to do is take the world position given in the signal and add our position variance is just the position variance X Y and Z components that were also given so that we randomize the position of our explosions each time and we go ahead and return that so now we know what to do in order to make and retrieve an object from our pool what do we do whenever it's time for the object to get put back well that's going to be done inside of our explosion script which I have right over here and it has this back in the pool method and it's called just whenever we're done with the object inside of our 
explosion coroutine. So the back in the pool, it's going to go ahead and clean up the object by turning off the render and resetting the alpha and the local scale because they're being manipulated inside of the coroutine. And then we're going to set its position to the negative 99 on the Y so that it's no longer seen by the player. And we're going to put it back in the pool by calling the prefab accessor, getting the explosion pool list and then adding it back. So now let's go back to the prefab accessor and, and take a very quick look at our projectile pool. It's a little bit more complicated just because we have multiple types of projectiles, so it's a little bit more robust than the explosion pool. It is a dictionary projectile list, and what we use to index into it are these projectile types, which is just an enumeration that we came up with. And here we have our different projectile types, the missile, the sphere, homer missile, and the speed missile. And we were looking at the speed missile and the regular missile in the game just then. So that's what we're using to index into the dictionary to get the list. And if we take a look at the get projectile, we're going to accept a projectile type so that we know what list to get, the shooting object, and the spawn position. So first we need to make sure that the list is not null. In other words, that the list has been created. And if it has been created, then we're going to get that list. And if it has something in it, we're going to get the first projectile out and then remove that projectile from the list. If we didn't get a projectile back, then we're going to instantiate a new one. And then here we have some object specific operations where we just set the position, set the look at rotation to face the player, arm the projectile and set the shooter. And now we take a look at the projectile back in the pool method. And projectile is the base class that is inherited from all of our other projectiles. So this is the same method used by all of them. It's very similar to the explosion where it sets the position to the negative 99 in the Y so that it's under the map. And this time we're going to see if the list is null. And if it is null, we're going to create an empty list. Finally, we add the current projectile to that list. And that's it. That's some quick object pooling that's very simple and it's actually really effective. So thanks guys for watching. See you next time.